Olympia. Okay. We'll call the July 19th select board meeting to order. Uh, we've got Brad Town, John Quinn, Dave Sawyer here from the board with us and myself, Justin Lawrence, Rose not on at this moment. Um, additions or changes to the agenda. We're going to add the uh, agreement with the city of Montpelier for the, uh, it looks like with the Thunder Chickens indemnification for the parking. This is with, no, this is only for the uh, bridge work on Darling Hill. Okay. And the storage of the material for the bridge work on the property. Okay. Uh, oh, okay. Um, I'd also like to add this minutes from 23 June. Put the uh, uh, agenda out so I just like to those for well, and they're in everybody's package. Okay, um, we have a draft posted online. Draft of the minutes, I could not post the drafts online. Okay, I, I've been posting the approvals. Once okay, I could be wrong, but I think by law we have to have something posted in five days. Five days, so we'll not add that. I will start to uh. Okay. With the, with hopefully, the as we transition to dot gov, could be a good time to. Yeah. All right. Uh, anything else? All right. Any public comment? All right. Hearing none, uh, we have Barrytown EMS contract discussion with Fire Chief. I think we have Joe as well joining us. John and Keith. Joe and Keith, right? Good evening, guys. Hi hey there, how are you doing today? Good, yourself? Good, good. So I'm actually gonna have Joe take the lead on this discussion instead of me, because he was a bit more involved with the working of the contract and the analyzing of the numbers. So I'll just immediately turn it right over. All right. Okay, so um, can everybody hear me all right? Yep, yep, thank okay. you. Um, so I guess uh, the, the question is, is, is the contract from with Barrytown and the Berlin Fire Department and the rental agreement, um, I, I think uh, the rental agreement is, is um, I'm gonna say is 1550 and it, it's, what was considered a very um, fair price for um, commercial rates, rental rates in the town of Berlin. It's also um, also including um, the utilities. So they don't pay anything for utilities. And this contract was given to Barry Town um, early November or mid-November prior to um, Barrytown EMS submitting their con their uh, contract for services for the town of Berlin. So I, I guess I'm not sure um, what we want to discuss. Okay. Um, so they had this early November. When what we actually it? had it on November 16th is when it was uh, sent by email. Uh, to Chris, Amanda, Amanda, on the 16th, okay. 16th, November 20th. What was the date of our proposal for our, uh, that took place in February, February uh, of this year, February 3rd. Yes. February 3rd, yep. Is anyone from uh, Barrytown EMS on? I don't believe it. I mean, these, these, these work, these contracts and agreements work, they run on the same time frame. So I would assume that if they had it early November, November, December, January, um, that that would have been a factor um, in, in their RFP. Is that what you, you folks were assuming as well with the fire department? Um, that, that's what I would assume. Um, and, and even though, you know, it was... Uh, early mid-November when it was emailed to Chris Lamanda, this was also, we had conversations throughout the whole summer on this. You know, he knew that there was gonna be an increase. Um, I also, in the contract, in the previous contracts, um, it starts out one year at 
you know, a price and then increases like 3% every year after that for the, for the duration of the contract. This contract is one increase, will not increase for three years. The only increase that they would see is if I believe there is an option for renewal or, or extension with their services. Right. Okay. And so only at that time would there be enough, be an increase and, and it would be one increase at that time for up to two years. Cause I think, I'm not sure if you guys go every year um, for an extension or you opt to do uh, a two year extension. I think it was a three-year contract with two possible two-year, one-year extensions, if I okay. remember that correctly. But, you yep. know, and, and just, just to kind of put this in perspective, it is um, Barrytown EMS, they do not pay any utilities there. Our, our average utilities in the last four years, for four years, is over $34,000. That's an average for a year for utilities. And if we were to look at the impact of Barrytown EMS within that building, if I was looking at just 10%, that would be a $289 monthly increase. And what they're looking at with the contract, the unsigned contract is $200. I mean, in, in, in the current contract with the town, it says uh, if the rental fees increase by more than 3% from year to year, I'd be curious if they would try to say their rental fees included their own utilities, if you guys were to... to well, their utilities them, are. Utilities, they're, include, utilities. they're included now, but if you charge them separately for a portion of the utilities in the lease agreement... Okay. So if you said, okay, well, we'll keep to the 3% increase... Um, but because of your usage, we'd like you to pay, uh, you know, 10 or 15% or whatever that would be of our, our utility bill, then it would be billed as utilities. And I wonder what they would consider with that um, because it's not utilities anymore. It's, it's, it's not a rental fee. It's actual utilities. And, and yeah, I mean, that's, that's a whole another write up of a contract. Um, Looking at that anyway. Is, think. Yeah. Well, the, the thing <laughs> My problem with this, and I'm looking at what Chris sent back to the town, his numbers here aren't correct anyway. The current fiscal year of 2021 of 1344 is incorrect when it's actually 1350. And then there's nothing in the contract that he supplied to the town to us saying what the actual rent was for the following for that increase he, he he just gives some circumstances if it increases above because of uh you know rent uh government regulation cost of operating you know, uh, taxes and other other increases so there's nothing in this contract that to us that uh says what the rent was proposed to them at, at that time is he operating on the 1350 rent or the rent that the agreement that should have taken effect at the same time the contract takes effect. So, because he supplied this to us with, right. and those aren't correct. Actually. Have you received copies of that email? Did the, the, the fire department receive copies of this email? I did not send them that email. We should share that information with them yeah. and make and validate it. So um, I, I think this is what you might have been saying, um, Dave, is if, if everything was equal and these two contracts were supposed to be starting on July 1st, if they were both signed, um, I don't necessarily see where the beginning of a contract, you, you are going to be held to what was the previous amount. So... There, the increase starts on July 1st, or, or I should say the amount starts on July 1st, and there is no increase for three years. So, I, I mean, that's, that's how I see it. Oh, yeah. That's kind of basically what I'm trying to say is, yeah, if he, if he did his calculations on expenses for, for, to present this contract, that, and he looked at the contract in November, there is no increase over that three-year three period, right? Yeah. 
on that. I think uh, Barry Town's getting a pretty good deal out of it as it is, and they should be uh, lucky to be getting the deal that they are. I mean, from, from my perspective, and please tell me if I'm wrong, they're really the only ones in the building around the clock, seven days a week. That is correct. That's true. $34,000 worth of utility bills. And I get you with the fire department, there's, you know, I, I used to see the Northfield utility bills and they were nowhere near that. And while Berlin does get more calls, it doesn't make sense to me how, <laughs> how it could possibly be that large. That's that aside, they're getting a, they're getting a sweetheart deal all the way around with only a $1,500 a month payment. Yeah. It works out to a dollar three a square foot. Yeah. 1500 square feet. Yeah. Uh, where do you get a commercial so, contract for anywhere near yeah. that? And are you assuming that it's re it's a reasonable assumption that when they did the new RFP, since they already had the proposed contract for the lease agreement in their hand, that that would have been assumed and they started at the same time. So it's the agreement uh, yeah. of the board's opinion. That's how I would see it. But... Yeah. Mr. Town. <laughs> in your uh, electric bill, uh, where is the largest um, cost? Like time of day or? No, I mean, do you have a pump that's running 24 7? I mean, there's, there's going to be something sucking up some juice. Well, I guess I don't have an answer to what is actually generating that. That's three grand a month in utility. It's huge. Yeah. Maybe it's maybe town charge. Does it? Hmm. You know, garage right. doors going up and down, garage doors being left open during all seasons of, of the, you know, seasons of the year. So, yeah, you know, in the middle of November, or December, if you take off with an ambulance and leave the door wide open for a couple hours, that will generate some some high electric bills and heating bills. That happens. So, so Joe, your average utility bill per month is around $2,600? Um, that is also including, I did include plowing and rubbish removal. So, okay. So that, that's, that's, uh, utilities plus some, I guess. But, but not, not heat or is heat included in that as well? The heat is included. It's heat, okay. internet, sewer, water, phone, heating, plowing, rubbish. All utilities. All utilities. Okay, you got the big picture. Yeah, right. Oh, you weren't thinking about fuel oil or consumption. No, I thought oh. fuel oil was separate and didn't realize it was. I got gotcha. you. It makes it a little. So, is it, it sounds to me like the board feels as though the rent that you're charging is reasonable and the time frame for the, the time frame. Like we would stand behind them with, with saying that we don't support paying any extra from a municipal standpoint um, to help cover that. And is that a, a battle we want to choose to get into if we need to? Well, I would think I'd take some issue if they're leaving the garage doors open in the uh, winter. I mean, they're, they're driving the cost themselves. Right? Well, I would share too with the board that I did meet with the uh, Joe there the other day and I was looking at the install of these air conditions that they put in. They've got air conditioning in the windows with uh, cardboard. There's nothing stopping. I mean, there's it, it just a poor installation where I believe Joe addressed in the new contract that they would install them to make them more efficient. Am I correct with that, Joe? In, in saying that? that? That is correct. Um, so, I mean, they 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 put them in there, they, they run them, you know, 24 seven, and you have nothing but, you know, cardboard and that time, yeah. um, wind, wind soaked or rain soaked cardboard, you know, just, uh, not necessarily keeping the, the cool in. It's not very energy efficient set up there. And they're older units. You're not even a, you know, an upgraded unit that would be friendly to 
<laughs> it probably isn't important to you. I don't have the contract in front of me, but it addresses air conditioners and additional electric items on that that's allowable under the contract. It it is. Okay. Um, what what changed what changed with this contract is is I address the the um, days of the the dates of which they could be installed and then when they would be removed. Okay. Um, you know that and also that the install I believe we should be handling and not um, not Barry Town. Yep. Uh, any other updates you want to share with us about services that we're receiving over there since you guys probably see it a little closer than we do? You mean with Barry Town? Yep. Um, no, I don't think I'm ready. To, no, I don't think so. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I was just asking. No, I think your next step is to get uh, Chris Lamonda down. Just question how he came about the contract numbers, and if he taken in consideration in November. Next meeting. Yeah, let's, yep. let's invite Chris in. We'll invite Chris in for the next meeting. Uh, hopefully, he can attend, and we'll we'll have the same discussion with him, and we'll we'll lay out the same timelines and the reasons why we keep support where you guys are coming from on this. Okay. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Anything Thank else? You, Joe, Keith. No. No. Hey. Thank you. All right. Uh, next up, we have discussion of a deferred compensation plan offer. So Mr. Owen is with us tonight to uh, take you through that, and there are some information in your packages that's provided. Hey, good evening. You guys hear me okay? Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks for letting me um, join you guys. Me do appreciate it. And so you guys, basically, you have the chance to offer a deferred compensation plan to all of your employees there at the town. And it doesn't cost anything to you as being the employer. Now, it's referred to as like a supplemental retirement account, basically, in addition to like the Beamer's pension retirement account. And basically allows the employee to have a little bit more control over the retirement. And what I mean by that is with the Beamer's pension is they really have no say over how much they contribute each pay period, how that money is invested. The only thing they can control with that Beamer's retirement is their years of service. With the deferred compensation plan, it's one where the employee can choose if they want to participate, if they want. They choose how much they contribute each pay period, whether it's a certain dollar amount, per pay period or percentage of their pay, something they can change at any time, start and stop at any time. So it's one, it's just an account that they have more flexibility and more control with. Also too, depending on how the employee utilizes the account, it gives them more immediate benefits for the current tax year because doing pre-tax contributions to the account can help lower their taxable income. They can also inside the plan do some after-tax contributions, which are referred to as Roth which can also make it so they have some tax-free income in retirement as well. Or they can do a combination, the pre-tax, the Roth, a combination of the two. So again, just kind of gives them that a flexibility there. Now the deferred comp account, it's a 457B. You guys are probably familiar or heard of a 401k. There's basically different numbers for different types of retirement accounts for different types of employers. The 401ks are through private companies. There's 403bs for like schools, hospitals, nonprofit organizations. Because the state's part of a government entity, it's a 457b. And there are a couple things unique, I'd say, about a 457b versus other retirement accounts. Usually with retirement accounts, there's that magical age of 59 and a half. Usually if you take money out of a retirement account prior to age 59 and a half, usually there's a 10% penalty on that amount. That doesn't apply to the contributions that go into a 457B account. So for instance, thinking of some state troopers, public safety officials, police, fire department, sometimes people retiring in their early 50s, some of them mandatory age 55. The deferred compensation account being a 457B, it's a type of account they can withdraw from regardless of age with no penalty. And also, too, one other thing about 
kind of unique to a 457B is they have what they call a special three-year catch-up. So basically your last three years prior to your retirement year, you can contribute up to 39000 in the account. So just a lot of room for capacity there. Now, being a retirement account is still subject to the contribution limits. So for instance, a person can put up to 19500 into the account for the year, and that can be pre-tax, Roth, or a combination of the two. They just can't go over that contribution limit. Um, someone 50 or over actually goes up to 26000 so a little bit more room for capacity there. Um, but to that being said, with this type of account, it's not a very liquid account. So there's no like loan option on the account. People can't borrow against it. It's something where basically while they're an active employee, they can contribute to the account, can't really take any money out of the account. Once they stop working for the town, that's when they could be able to access the funds in there. And then really at that point, as long as the balance, the amount they take out and the frequency is really up to them. And then again, regardless of age, there's no penalty there. Looking at it too, there's no employer match. So it's just the employee's contribution. So again, with that being said too, there's no vesting period either. And what I mean by that is because it's just the employee's contribution, whatever amount is in the account at any time, there's no vesting period. So let's say they open up the account a couple months later, are no longer working for the town, go somewhere else. They can basically just take the deferred comp account and bring it with them to their new employer's retirement account and just kind of keep it going with them that way, similar like a 401k. Or again, other people have old 401ks, other traditional IRAs, other retirement accounts through older employers. They could take those funds, consolidate those into the deferred comp plan as well, because that's something they couldn't do with the Beamer's account. But again, take those old retirement accounts, consolidate them here. And then again, something happens, they go somewhere else, just take this account and just kind of keep it going with them that way as well. Now, with the account, there's a fee in regards to it, that prudential charges. And how the fees work, it's basically they charge a percentage of the assets in the account. And it's 0.035% of the assets in the account. So think about basically 35 cents for every thousand dollars. So it's very minimal. That's an annual amount and then, but Prudential just takes it out on a quarterly basis. So basically that 35 cents split up over the four quarters there. Also two looking at there's the different investment options inside of the account. There's about 25 different mutual funds and ETFs to choose from. So some could go in and pick their own funds if they wanted. Prudential, we have a free tool called Goalmaker just to help simplify the investment piece of it for us. Just because I would say nine out of 10 people don't know what should I have as far as a mixture of stocks and bonds. Should I go rebalance now? That Goalmaker tool just helps simplify it. They basically pick how aggressive they want to be. There's three options, conservative, moderate, or aggressive. And the second piece it looks at is when they're looking to retire because the time frame piece of investing is pretty important, right? The longer we have, the more aggressive we could be to kind of make up for those dips and pullbacks where as we get close to that retirement age, we kind of want to preserve that nest egg we built up over the years, right? So based on those two pieces, the goal maker tool helps come up with that allocation as far as the mixture of stocks and bonds fund go, rebalances on a quarterly basis, just so people don't have to worry about what the markets are doing. Should I go rebalance now? automatically doing it on a quarterly basis for them. And also too, it just gets more conservative for them automatically as they get closer to that retirement age as well. So really kind of a way to just help put it on autopilot or you could always go in and switch it up from conservative moderate to aggressive at any time too. And come into play as well. So with the plan, basically kind of think of me like a free financial advisor. So versus, you know, the advisor who's working for a commission, you know, something where I'm literally just contracted with the state, I can't give any, um, I can't technically give you guys advice and tell you what to do, but at the same time. Here to help educate you guys, kind of help you understand the benefits, but also with the employees, kind of help them take advantage of the different situations as well. Um, but even too, when the accounts are set up, walking through the accounts online, playing around with the different financial tools that we have, we have like a retirement income calculator to kind of see, make some projections. Like if I was saving, you know, $50 a pay period versus a hundred, what would that look like over five or 10 years? So again, I'm kind of here just to help handhold everything and help people out along the way. Um, something where obviously pre COVID, I used to come in and meet with people, you know, face to face. Yeah. Here until September, um, but usually do go around to the different towns and stuff again, meet with the different departments, whether it's staff meetings or even on a one on one basis. Um, but I'm basically kind of here to help 
you guys out through the whole process as well. Um, or even too, just little things helping them out with their account, but understanding the difference between the deferred compensation plan versus the Beamers, have discussions on social security. Again, that's where I'm kind of here to help you guys out where I can. Okay. Um, See a lot of people with. Diane, do you have any concerns about letting the employees? Uh, no, I can definitely set up another. Yeah, I can set up something as pre-tax and after-tax. We have a lot of that in pay data, payroll. That's not a problem. Does that impact our payroll costs? And, you know, should it by would impact our payroll costs a little bit. It would. Probably. Yes, it would. Okay. Yeah. Negatively. The more features we have, the more impact. Do we know what that expense would be? Mm -mm. No, because I'd have to get more information from him in order to, to run it by pay data and find out what it is. Okay. I think we should probably get a little bit more information. Yeah. Investigate it and see yeah. what it'll be. It's not, I mean, it's, it's a great idea and yeah. a great concept, um, but we, we definitely we need to make a decision based yeah. on. And honestly, the way the pensions are going and pension conversations around the state, like letting employees, you know, have another way to save and retire that where they can't pull it out um, is probably not a bad thing. Right. Um, they can also I, use I it to buy out their question. last yeah. last year's before retirement if they want. But I do have a question of you. So let's say um, I take $50 a pay period out of my check and you're saying that there's this 0.35% uh, um, fee. Now, does that, I don't, you're not going right. to bill that to the employee. Doesn't that just come out of nope. so, yeah. Exactly. It comes right out of the account. Yep. It comes out on a quarterly basis. You'll see it right in the transaction history. Yep. So there's nothing administratively there that you'll have yeah. to do. Prudential okay. will just take that right out of the account. Okay. Yeah, Perfect. So we'll just get some additional information as far as what it would cost us from an administrative standpoint. Yep. Yeah. And uh, we'll bring it up again. Um, anything else you'd like to add, Mr. Owen? Oh, I mean, obviously, there's some other towns like City of Barry, you know, utilize it, um, you know, pretty close to Rick Taff or even Elaine Wang in Barry Town. They're utilizing the deferred comp plan. So if you kind of wanted their perspective um, as well, I mean, definitely reach out to them. Um, but I'm, again, very accessible to you guys as well, too. Um, welcome to come back, give you more information. Um, we'll we'll update you. Help you guys with just let me know. Yeah, we'll update you when we, we discuss it again, probably, so you can attend if you want. Um, <laughs> But we'll find out more information. We'll put it on another agenda for, for some additional conversation so we can make an educated decision as a board. Okay. Fair enough. That sounds good. Uh, next up, we have the vast landowner permission form signature approval. So this is... Uh, Looks like Thunder Chickens Inc. Um, Dave Rulo sent this up. I'm curious, um, since we do have the Northfield Club in there, um, if any motion that we make, I think it should probably include uh, any, uh, maybe either like a blanket statement of any vast uh, yeah. organized local I, club. I was looking at it and because of the way they have it set up, um, it's fine because it is the overall vast organization that's asking for the permission. That's just the Washington right. County Snow. Yeah, yeah, that, I think, yeah. I think we should be okay. And it was there as the uh, kind of the lead point of contact yeah. for us to work through for the. That's just the name of the local yeah. club. So if for some good. reason, if some reason Dave's not or Thunder Chickens are involved, and Northfield becomes more involved, that it's not an issue. Okay. Um. Yeah, and I, I had spoken to Dave. So, so as a board, we have a couple of decisions that we can make. Um, the Bass Trail goes through my property, um, and one of the, the so on here they they put a permission extends for a period stating December sixteenth, twenty twenty one to April fifteenth, twenty twenty two. When I gave Bass permission uh, to use my property, I left it until rescinded. Um, that way it eliminates the need to come back every year, get signatures, all that continued follow up. So that is an option as well. When I spoke to Dave and he said, it's as simple as him coming up and, and getting another form or signature or changing it or whatever, if, depending on what the board chooses to do. Um, other than that, it's just the standard permission form uh, that I'm saying one that we signed last year, actually. 
All right, well, I guess I'll make a motion to have uh, the board chair sign the, the vast landowner permission form um, until rescinded after, after a public hearing and a board vote. I think um, that should do it. I would second that, that motion. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. All right, Good Samaritan uh, permit request change office petition. Good evening. Uh, should I go ahead and speak? I'm Rick DeAngelis of the Good Samaritan Haven. Sure, Rick. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Well, good, e good evening, Select Board. We're, we're back again. I'm here with Nicola Anderson of uh, Downstreet Housing. Uh, and we, we're here very simply to inform you of a request that we've made to the DRB, explain why we're doing it, and uh, address any questions that you had. Uh, Tom Badowski recommended that we do this, and uh, it made a lot of sense to me. Uh, we're not requesting that you take any action at all. So there should be a letter in your package. There's one small uh, change from what I had in the letter that will become apparent with my remarks. And I'll just go ahead. It's only going to take a few minutes to explain what's going on. So we're asking the DRB to modify the permit that we've already received to operate as a motel. And we want to operate instead as congregate living. Um, as congregate living, we can manage the property as the way that we always wanted to, which is as emergency housing program or a shelter. Um, and you know what this means, it has some real specific benefits. Um, we can select the guests, we can establish rules, check rooms as frequently as we need to, make sure that there's no alcohol in the rooms, um, uh, require participation and service plans. And finally, if it doesn't work out, we can require somebody to leave immediately. Um, otherwise, and this was something we just didn't appreciate previously, Operating as a motel is far more limiting. We have to accept referrals from the Economic Services Division for motel vouchers. And uh, in case you didn't know, that's the system that um, has been used at the Hilltop Inn and other area motels throughout the pandemic. And it's just a far more rigid system uh, for us to work with. And um, uh, uh, so, uh, I apologize that we didn't know this from the get-go. I guess we had a miscommunication with the state of Vermont about um, uh, how they were looking at this. This model hasn't been used all that many times, so that's, that's probably the reason why. So that's it in a nutshell. I'm glad to any, answer any questions that you might have. Thank you, Rick. Thank you, Rick. As well, yeah, gotcha. Does the board have any questions? Yeah, Rick, I just had one, and I, I know I was in on this uh, the last time you here, but just to clarify, you guys are it's going to be staffed and somebody there 24 7. Exactly, it's it's 24 7 round the clock. Plus, I mean, we're going to have most of our staff there, we have 15 staff people. And uh, this is becoming our headquarters, basically. So I'm feeling pretty good about the level of attention and presence that we're going to have there. Any other questions? Rick, this is Flo Smith. I was just curious, how many staff are you planning to have at the facility in a 24-hour period? Well, there's always one person there at a minimum. So in the morning, let's say three o'clock in the morning, there would be one person there and that person is awake also. Um, throughout the day, there'll be more, um, uh, you know, uh, from eight to eight to six, we would have two person, two people just managing the facility, making sure that it's running smoothly. 
And then also during the day, we're going to have our administrative staff, which is myself and um, uh, uh, our housing case managers and so forth. So I would say during the day, we'll, I would imagine that we have at least six people there on our staff. Thank you. Rick, one other question. So it seems like, you know, we've had a couple of things come up as we're navigating through this process where maybe it was you were unaware of it previously and, and you say it's a new system and a new model. Uh, as we look at uh, how to best represent our town residents, is there anything that you could warn us about? Maybe we should be a little nervous about or maybe a little surprised that we may not be aware of because that, that's a legitimate concern, I think, in some ways, right? Well, you got you've got me there for sure. Um, I I I I think we've got it nailed down this time, and um, we're pretty clear about what we op want to operate, and we've been clear about that to ourselves. And I hope we've expressed that to you. Um, some of the bureaucratic aspects of this, like there was a meeting that we asked, we thought we we needed your sign off for funding. Um, I'm sorry about that. The bureaucracy around this is uh, pretty intense, and um, but I, I I'm feeling pretty confident that the program that we want to run, um, we know what that is. Right. So it feels like we're we're trying to push really hard to get this to happen really quick, um, and I'm just wondering if. Uh, I mean, I'm just wondering if all the systems are in place to have it run properly for the for what you're trying to accomplish, because obviously you're finding out additional information as you go. And so I'm just, I want to ensure that the town's not going to have, have to go, oh, well, I wish we had known that six months ago before they moved here. Um, you know, it, it, in a fully supportive way, but things are going to pop up as we go. And I, how are we going to navigate that? Uh, because it seems so far as we've gone forward in this process to be fairly consistent uh, changing, <laughs> um, or requests or lots of unknowns, I should say. Yeah, I, I'm sorry about that. Um, we're trying to be an open book about this. Uh, we have moved quickly, but, uh, we, we, uh, we know how to run these kind of facilities. We've been doing it for 35 years and, um, I, we've got the staff ready for this. I, uh, you know, the people, uh, we have a staff that's been working in the motels and they are ready uh, whenever this facility starts to move, move on over. So I, I. Right, so if you've been, if you've got, if you've been doing this for 35 years, do you have another model or another uh, example that's just like this one somewhere else in the state that we could look at? I, uh, there, there are some motels, uh, that, that are being operated right. as shelters. But that, uh, that's different than what, that's different than what you're asking for here, right? Or am I getting confused? Uh, but there are, there are, there are both motels, there are both homeless programs that run as motels. And, uh, there is at least one or two that operate as a shelter. Uh, which is what we're proposing. Under the voucher program? Uh, some run under the voucher program. And uh, like I say, they can only accept referrals uh, from the Economic Services Department. Uh, the, the main example of that is Harbor Point, which is in Shelburne. So well, it's, a different, it's a different model than what you're using is what you're saying. So there really isn't a comparison or there is? I'm just... Because if I, it's... A, Sorry, so I would say is that we, with changing this use, we are running the, well, Rick and Good Sam Haven is able to run this um, Twin City Motel the way that we intended and wanted to. You know, we accept that we don't have this 30 day um, minimum. Before, we really weren't hoping to use the motel vouchers either, but, and we were just told different things from the from AHS, but we are running it the way that we've always kind of explained and hoped that we would. But this funding, we've gotten more information from the funding basically because we weren't, it was different information that we were told previously, but we really do, we're not changing the operations of what's been told, except for this 30 day minimum. It's um, 
Rick's got everything in place. The funding is secured for the development of the project and really for and and for the the operatings once this is developed. It's secured, but this just in order for us to actually operate it, we can't operate it under the term of a motel. And initially we were told that. So that's where the confusion has really come from. So by changing this, the wordage uh, that, that you've come to ask it for, what it does essentially, and correct me if I'm wrong, it allows you to have that zero tolerance of uh, drugs or alcohol and stuff like that in that program. And the space that's provided to, to them during the transitional phase, it's not like their own private little spot. You guys can make sure there's no drugs in there or alcohol or anything of that nature. Is that, uh, that, that, that That's exactly what I was trying to express to you tonight. Um, uh, we, this allows us to check every room every day and to, and to operate it as a program. And uh, if you violate a rule of the program, you need to leave uh, uh, if, you, if it's a serious violation. Uh, otherwise, people have a right to a motel room, and uh, it really limits our, reflex uh, our flexibility. And um, I, I apologize. I, this was always our intention. Um, sometimes the communications with the state, which is our funder, I wish they, I wish they had been better. So, so there will be a zero tolerance, correct, within within your program as far as the any substances. Absolutely. And you're a hundred percent positive that by making this change, that's you'll be able to operate exactly as you've proposed to the town. I'm a hundred percent positive. This is what we presented to you initially, and I'm sorry we didn't get it right right from the get go. Um, all right, thank you, Rick. Okay. Any, yeah. any other questions from the board? Thank you for clarifying, Rick. Rick, the, pla the place in Shelburne that you were talking about, what's the name of the, the home or the facility? I can give you two examples. Uh, uh, the one that runs as a motel uh, is Harbor Place. That's in Shelburne. Uh, there is also an example that runs as a shelter, and that's in Burlington, and that's called a new place. So those are two different examples. So is, is it safe to assume that a new place most likely represents your model, or is yours completely different from a new place? Like, I guess I think they're 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 very similar. The only the only the problem with that is a comparison. They're they're fairly new. They're only about a year old. Okay, but they're similar. So yes. Okay, that was your initial question, anyway, right? Yeah. Anybody else? Thank you. Thanks Thank so you. much. We didn't need any action on that. He said so. Treasurer's report. Okay. Uh, just to let you know, I did send the tax bills out last Thursday, and people have been coming in and paying their bills, and not too many questions so far. So things so far so good. I'm sure I will be having a lot of revised bills, uh, just because a lot of people uh, do their taxes after April 15th, and the homestead is not um, reflected because I send the bills out so early. But. That's it. All right, I got sidetracked. Okay. So Vince is making me aware of the fact that. We actually need to make if uh, take some action maybe on the good scenario to get back back up. Isn't that for the um, development review board? Review board. Does it they have to have a list approval? They asked to bring it to the board um, to make sure. Well, we, we don't need to, we need to get consensus though, right? Um, to change the from a hotel to a shelter, Congress. Congregate living. congregate living offices and office congregate living and offices uh, for the application. I mean, it, it sounds like a positive step, meaning the the hotel voucher system. I think if, if we want to see how that's run, we can <laughs> we can go down the street. Yeah, right. I think we already know. I think this just gives them more. This seating. gives them yeah. Okay. 
Well, I mean, maybe we'll just make a motion that way it's done. So, anybody care to make a motion? I'd make a motion to uh, uh, do the change from the hotel to the, uh, uh, what'd you call it, congregate living? Congregate living. Uh, thank for the uh, Good Samaritan, David. And Second. I, I would add to that that it's uh, an approval of the DRB. So, so yes, I would make make the motion uh, to proceed from the hotel to the congregate living uh, at the uh, Twin City Hotel, as long as it's accepted through the DRB. Second. And this Blow Smith and I second. Okay. Uh, any additional discussion? Those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Um, there we go. Um, let's just do that indemnification agreement real quick. So this is an indemnification agreement. So the staging, I guess, on Montpelier land. The staging and the bridge work they have to cross over the other side through so, all the property. I recall they gave us permission to cross over there. Uh, there's the, the backside of the signatures. Um, I didn't want to sign it, even though we've had discussion on it without you guys having an opportunity for, for review. Um, that was lost it already. It was drafted by Rob. Rob drafted it. Yeah, that's good information. Uh, you can have that. That's probably yours. So it's only for a month and a half. So yeah, it's just so that they yeah. that um, basically we can go up there and then they can build the bridge for the Irish Hill Trail. Um, and it, it's looking for my signature or the chair's signature on the back. And so what we're looking for is a motion to approve the agreement and authorize me to sign. Make a motion of the approval of the agreement. I'd second it. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, Aye. Well, thank you, Paul. Uh, Earl and Mall rental space potential offer discussion. Mr. Rushman with us tonight also to answer any questions that they have around that as well. Part of, the, uh, part of the reason this came up, as you know, with the new town center, uh, one of the um, Expectations for the designation, or one of the conditions for the designation of the town center from the downtown board, is to have some type of form of the town offices in the new town center zone. The way, the way I read it was that we strongly consider it. Right. They made it a condition. Yeah. In the, on the new town center one? On the designation. I, I personally do not think we should be mm -hmm. taking retail space out of the mall, too. A town office. That's just me. What's the fact? I mean, if you don't have the town presence there, it should be accessible from the parking lot, not through the ca uh, causeway. Right. When you said they made it a condition, who did? The downtown board. Or the new town center approval board. We will, I'm sure we will put a building there with our town office as soon as we save up enough money to, to do that. I was I was thinking that it's call me crazy, but CDH is about to have a huge increase in their value on their property. And since currently I don't think we receive any pilot money, they might give us a good deal on a property to build. Yeah. <laughs> There's no is there a, is there there's no time on that uh, on the on the, uh, the okay. new town center is there as far as the town putting an office there? No, there was there wasn't a firm commitment. I don't believe I'd have to look at the conditions again. There was some mention of uh, something within five years, I believe, but I'd have to look at the conditions again to be clear. I'm not saying I'd be opposed to it, but. I mean, this space here is being outdated. 
And, uh, but I don't want to be crowded into it either. So one of, one of the things that just comes to mind when we're thinking about this, and I understand not wanting to take retail space away, um, but we do have this, like the historical society here and, and here. And so that wouldn't necessarily be a, a bad location for them to have some space. And I, and I don't know as well. And it, yeah, and it, 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 I mean, what they're, correct me if I'm wrong, but they're looking at giving us an opportunity to have a, a couple presence. thousand square feet for free. Almost, almost yeah. For how long? Two years. Then it's not free. It's negotiable at that price. Right. I mean, at that point. Well, then, that's and, then, and then, and then, yeah. Right, so you would then relocate if you want to. So the, the downfall is, you know, would it, I don't see how it would devalue the, the, the tax assessment of the property and then cost the town any revenue in that aspect. Um, I, gotta, I, just, I guess I just got to ask, why would they want to give us space for free in the building? Michael, would you like to speak to that? Yes. Uh, one of the things that I think you've seen happening over the last couple of years is that the mall space is going to be more multi-purpose in the coming years. It will not be exclusively retail. Um, and that's something that's happening with malls all across the country as they're having to reinvent themselves. Uh, part of what we've worked on with the town for five plus years now is the new town center designation. And I believe the requirement that there be some kind of a town facility within the new town center area is something that the state will be looking at at the two-year review mark and at the required four-year review mark. Uh, it's, it's, as been said, it's not an absolute commitment on the part of the town, uh, but it's one of the things that the state will evaluate when they decide whether or not to continue the designation. In any event, we think that, that having a portion of the town offices, specifically the historical society and public meeting space at the mall is completely consistent with our vision of what we're trying to transform the mall into. Uh, at the location we've proposed, uh, the space would be accessible uh, beyond normal mall operating hours uh, because the main entrance is open 24 seven for uh, the uh, Planet Fitness space. And this is just a couple doors down from that. Uh, in terms of the, the two years, et cetera, our understanding was that, that this was a potential interim solution for the town to give it some more breathing room at your current town offices when you evaluate long-term options. So whether one of those long-term options would be in the mall, whether it would be a freestanding building, on a building pad elsewhere on the Newtown Center site. That's something for obviously you folks to study and evaluate. Um, well, so with this spot is that there's there's egress through the back of the building as well, right? So you don't yes. necessarily have to come through the mall to get into that space. Um, and then how many, approximately how many, how much parking would be available for us out back or out in back. a location that was easily accessible? There are probably, I would think, at least a half dozen spaces that we'd be able to earmark for you. There are more spaces than that, but they aren't reserved spaces at the moment. So that's something we would need to look at in terms of what the exact use is right now. Obviously, in the front, there's unlimited or enormous amounts of parking. The other thing to remember for this space is there is also, everybody's familiar with the three main entries, Walmart, where Penny's used to be and then the center main entrance. There's one additional entrance that's right next to Pasumsic Bank. It's just a single door entrance. And that's almost directly across from this space four that we're talking about. Okay. Uh, we definitely appreciate this offer. And I, I think the board may have some ideas of potential usage for it. Um, what what are you thinking after the two years? I mean, you guys, the, the mall developers must have some sort of a long-term plan. So what happens is if, if we relocate our off, some offices over there and we're utilizing that space, um, and then two years from now, 
we're, we're maybe forced to stay there for whatever reason. I, do you have, would you, would the mall number one be willing to say, okay, well, you know, we have a two and a five year period is what you're saying that, that for review, right? With the town center designation. Correct. So, so would the mall be willing to uh, look at uh, a two year contract where when we appreciate this rent free space, I mean, how could you not? Um, but would you also be willing to put in a proposal like, well, we could uh, renew the lease ad on an annual basis for the next two, three years following those two years? Yes, that's certainly something we, we, we would be willing to entertain, potentially <laughs> for a longer period. One thing, the other thing, if you're looking at a building on a separate pad, uh, we could discuss uh, a purchase option on you know a plot of land on the property again a purchase option that would be exercisable at your option so wow. again not something that ties you down yeah I, I, the main thing that i want to get across tonight uh, in meeting with you is that the mall owners are are very receptive to the notion and, and very supportive of the notion of the town having a long-term presence at the new town center and this was really a way to get the discussion started. It's, it's, and we thought it was important to put at least a couple specific ideas on the table, but our discussion shouldn't be limited by the few things that were on the, the, the list that we sent right. over. Yeah, I'd, I'd like there. to back up quickly and apologize for my, why in the heck would we want to do this and take space away from retailers? After, after, you know, hearing you, you know, wanting to evolve what the mall is, it does make a little bit more sense, but it seems to me, wouldn't we want to put someone in there that was forward facing someone that we want to, or that deals with the public on a regular basis to keep that foot traffic going to the mall and, and not be just like a, a, you know, kind of walk by and look, but, you know, and, and this is, this is no more than me just throwing out a name like the town clerk's office where people go in, you could register to vote. You could, you know, get your dog permit. You could, you know, look at the land records, you know, and actually, you know, have some real foot traffic there. Or do you guys have something really specific in mind as far as the historical society or public meeting space? We also had another thought too. Right. Actually. Or, or, you know, police, police departments have evolved over the years into more of a community policing type of um, direction, would it be you know, a feasible space for our police department that um, is, is you know, rather large in size and outgrowing its space as well? Uh, yes, with the list of possible users we put down were as a result of a couple of meetings we had with, with Vince and Tom. Uh, we're open to whatever it is. As you said, things that generate foot traffic that obviously is something that is, is good for us. Uh, we thought with the Historical Society, it could be set up potentially in a way where there would be exhibits that would be able to be seen through glass windows as people walked by, even if the space wasn't open at that point to come into. Uh, as far as the police department goes, that's something we would be very open to. I'm not sure about their exact square footage requirements either today or what they would want for expansion space. Uh, they would, uh, again, I think the rear access to this space, they're actually two separate doors. Uh, I think that would be very handy for them. So again, I see this as, as sort of opening up a discussion and I think you'll find us uh, bending over backwards to be flexible, to try to help you meet both interim and long-term needs. And to give you some options, as you mentioned, you, you know, an, an option to extend the term of a lease or option to purchase a pad of property. Really, really appreciate you bringing that forward. How how do you see uh, the potential to proceed and make some decisions uh, on your end moving forward, so that the so that the town can make decisions? Um, what do you see for a timeline? What's the process? If you could explain that from your yeah. end for us, that would be helpful. Right. Um, we specifically picked this space for some of the reasons that I mentioned in terms of accessibility, particularly the after 7 p.m. accessibility and being able to access the, the public restrooms, even if there was a public meeting in there after seven o'clock. Uh, but it was also space that we felt comfortable we could take off the market, if you will, uh, while we were having these discussions. 
Now, that's not something we can do indefinitely. I think you understand that. But certainly for the next uh, several months, if we're having meaningful discussions about what you might want to do here, uh, that's that's something I'm comfortable in saying. Okay, I don't. I, I mean, I don't really see a downside from a town perspective. For I mean, we obviously are, would expect and anticipate us to cover our utilities over there. I'm assuming. Right. Um, yeah, that, that's. But we're going to have to pay that wherever we are. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I'm much more comfortable with this than asking them for space. Right. Like if 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 this is what the mall owners want. You know, I, I'm much more amenable to it than us asking for space in the mall and taking up retail space that could be used. The biggest um, thing for us, I think, is, is understanding what it would look like potentially in year three, yeah. year four, and year five. Right. Um, it, would, it would certainly put the, the grip on us to do something, right, whether it was to stay there or... Yeah, but we'd something. want to know what it looked like, so we we'd have our options. And and honestly, the the purchase option for the town isn't isn't necessarily a bad bad thing to consider as well. So, if you one thing to keep in mind, there's 3,500 square feet of space adjacent to this that would be uh, available at at some foreseeable point in the future, if you after you studied this and thought about how you wanted to use it. So there's there's both extension of the term, expansion of the space. Uh, you know, there are a number of different ways we can go and sort of put together a menu for you of options that you can decide whether or not to exercise as time goes by. Well, I, I think that everybody here is very interested in exploring what our options are, and we look forward to hearing back from you. Um, on on potentially proceeding with with whatever meant, you know going through the menu and looking at it and having further okay. discussion as soon as possible, really. Okay, well then I will plan to, is the appropriate thing then for me to get back in touch with Vince and start uh, fleshing this out a little bit more? Yeah. Yes. yes, please. Okay, very good. Uh, do you have anything else that you wanted to add? No, I think that's it. I appreciate uh, your willingness to consider this. Oh, well, we definitely appreciate your uh, generosity in offering this. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Yep. All right. So next up, we have approval of the minutes for the meeting of the 21st of June and July 5th, both 2020. Vince added another set. Added 23 June as well. They weren't they weren't posted in the longer. So I think were any meeting? of these? No. No. Oh, no, no we, right. We, we don't it was more of a procedural all, yeah. question than specific to those. Yeah, we haven't been posting them until they were. So there's no the there's no negative to approving them. Okay, it's all. We'll also so, do June twenty third, twenty twenty one as well. Then I'll move approval of the minutes of meetings from June twenty first, June twenty third, and July fifth, twenty twenty one. Second. Any discussion? All right. Those in favor, say aye. 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 Motion carries. Um, lost it. What is with the capital thing? I was looking that's, at. That's, I'm going to bring that up at the round table. Okay. okay. Just, All right. Just came in. So. Throwing me off, but yeah. so I don't know. Mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. Put a note on the next one. Approval of license permits, vouchers, and applications. <laughs> All right. I move approval of payroll warrant twenty-two dash zero two. For payroll from July 4th, 2021 to July 17th, 2021, paid on July 21st, 2021, in the amount of $45,726.92. Payable warrant 22G01 with checks 21281 to 21316 in the amount of $80,000.50. June 20th. Okay. Sorry. Good. Or do I need to do the rest? Yeah. Uh, you need to keep you the rest. Okay. Hold on a minute. Stop. Well, it was cutting me off because she knew where I was. <laughs> uh, June 2021, uh, general journal entries, reconciled June bank statements for the general fund, sewer commission and water division. June 2021, trial balance re report, Budget status report and delinquent tax report. Second. All right. Any discussion? Those in favor say aye. 
Uh, Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Uh, Vince, you have anything for the round table? As a matter of fact, I do. Thank you. <laughs> First is a question. Uh, we had three bid openings on Friday. I mean, they were all, all both being published. Uh, you want to go over those and hear what the results were for each of those three? Real quick. Yep, sure. that. I think we should just do it for any audience that we may have. Okay, so the SIP liner on the Route 302 bids, um, the, the low bidder, apparent low bidder, uh, was Green Mountain Pipeline at 16.4. Uh, the second bidder was Granite Liner at 25, third Eastern Pipeline at 29,930, and fourth was Vortex at 32,390. So again, um, Otter Creek is going to be going through and doing more detailed analysis before we confirm low bidders, which will be probably early next week. Okay. So Crosstown Road Waterline Repair Bid, we had a low bidder from Dubois of 53,950. Second was Cortland Construction at 59,578. Third was H.A. Menashe at 64,444. Fourth was J.A. McDonald at 71,750. And fifth was Neil Daniels at 91,000 even. Hmm. And the third one was our favorite, Fisher Road Culvert Replacement. Uh, the low bidder was Dubois Construction at 839,900. Second was J.A. McDonald at 893 even. Uh, third was Hebert Excavating at 958 even. Fourth was H.A. Minosh at 981 even. And fifth was Jay Hutchins at 1,105,400. So again, low bidder appears to be Du Bois at this time at 839. Okay. Seems like they just don't want to move their equipment off the hill here. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, saving the money. And so. And what else do you have? I have from uh, Capital Earth Moving, Mr. Petoniak, a request to store 300 tons of hazardous material on a stockpile uh, for approximately two weeks on a property on uh, across from the Capital City Grange on Route 12 that he owns uh, for the, an excavation that he's uh, that he's doing. So he's looking uh, for the town uh, if it's satisfactory and would like me to respond in writing on that. And of this tonnage that he wants to store, what is it? It is something from the state house that's been declared uh, 300 tons of hazardous, hazardous material. Just talk be interesting in land. what it is. Oh, I, so, I, before I mean, I haven't talked to him specifically again. I just received a letter. I'm happy to go back and. I think we should know what we're voting on. Yeah. What, what, what the I material is. is. And, and for me, you know. Even though it costs a little bit of money, I'm interested in what our lawyer has to say about what our liability is. You know, if it rains really hard on it, if it's not covered right, like well, I, that's a high spot and yeah. groundwater and everything else below that, I'd be interested because down at Scott's building, uh, Merrill's building, they've got a drainage pond there that's up high. So, mm -hmm. what what is the material? What's the potential? Also, I see that uh, Merrill and Jason has been digging up there on that side hill. It's kind of sand. Yeah, it's got some. So, I'll so I think we'd like to know back. what we'd like to know what the what materials the material are and, uh, um, from the and what the what right. and also what the what the process and procedure is for storage and, and along with that, right? I mean, what what is what, the what's his plan to manage it while it's there? Yeah, yeah. Right. And, and the other question is. is 300 ton coming out of the state house. I, I'm sorry. I just yeah, look, the, I'm looking. Change of guard. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, I mean, it just seems <laughs> odd that they have that kind of materials there at the state house. I mean, that volume. Sorry, it can be I hazardous materials. Is, but I can certainly find out. Who knows? It could be. Yeah. It could be bad sure. coffee. I mean, right. You never know. Uh, anything else? That's uh, any legislators or anything? Time to wait. Should be, I hope I put a copy of this one in your package <laughs> on the scoping study for the multi use path at the Midtown Center as well? Um, you know, that, that there was only one bidder on it, it was high, um, above the, the budget by about eight and a half thousand dollars. The question is, we have bike path money that we can use to cover that cost. And that's the question. And there should be a copy of this in your package with the contract. I understand. Which one is it? Uh, Berlin 
Yeah, I didn't see that as well. Yeah, yeah. Could you yeah. Go yeah. yeah. just get it out yeah. that, get out to the board. I will get it out to the board. I don't know. It might have been an email, but I didn't see it. Where, where's that path go? That's around the one that is right. around the town center. Okay. Well, I mean, the new town center area. It's, you know, it's the it's the scoping study. I mean, it's, it's Sorry, I didn't get that in the back. I thought I did. So it's, uh, we propose to, pro oh, this is Otter Creek, but you know, uh, we propose to provide services as outlined in the accompanying uh, technical proposal for engineering services on an hourly basis for $48,415 based on the fee calculation provided on the following page. So $48,000. Um, so when we have Brandy Saxon and, and Place Sense do these. She's the one who would have put together the potential cost for this. No, that's directly Otter Creek. Brandy no, no, when we did the budget. So who did the budget for the anticipated cost of this? That's, so, that's a good question. Uh, I'm curious if it was our, I mean, it must have been our consultant for the town center, I would assume, mm -hmm. right? Well, it awesome. could be Otter Creek, as far as I know. Right. Did, did, we, did we go out to bid for that? Was that? For this one? Yeah. We did, and we only had, uh, no, they, had four people only express bid. interest and only received one bid. So my question would be, with all of this, at what time does the town start considering? What, how much did we spend, I wonder, in engineering fees last year? Engineering uh, uh, You gave me that number I mean, not too long ago. Really? I, I mean, at some point, I, I think, oh, that's right, would, it, yeah. it, would it be an interesting so conversation to have a town engineer? I can, tell you, I can tell you it was over a hundred thousand because I know I asked I in for those numbers for just that reason to start looking at costs and it was over a hundred thousand dollars just just with Otter Creek Engineering that we spent on engineering. Well, I mean, well, even that's the study there. That's something a town engineer would probably things, be able to do. The thing there is, is, is there some other town around here that's looking for the the, 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 the same bind we are, and would they be willing to share an engineer? So she looked at the amount the, of, she looked the time, the amount that Northfield spends just on their wastewater and, and road engineering. I, I mean, it may not be a full time job for either town, but the two of them together would certainly. Absolutely. And I think it's honestly, I mean, like if you look at that potential bill there along with it, like the, the Fisher Road culvert items like that, I mean, that's absolutely. It definitely would make. Yeah. A lot of I mean, right, right, right in the in the foreseeable future, it's all going to be over at, the, uh, over at the town center. I mean, most of the engineering will be done for all the culverts. Once we get Richardson Road done, it's pretty well. So the next thing pops up, right? Well, I mean, <laughs> I mean, it's I, ongoing. Yeah, yeah but, but I, I, no, I think you're right. I agree. The, the worst of it will be the. I think we should we should look at either part time uh, staff member maybe before that would save the town money. I think. Possibly, it would be worth looking into, and and maybe talking with Ms. Rose about it since you're familiar with how they budget over there. I don't know what Waterbury has or um, any of the other ones. Uh, Getting some information. We have time to do that. I like that. Yeah, you do. Of course. <laughs> Whatever you set for the priority, I have time for. Right. I guess so. I don't know. Um. Brad, anything else for round table? Maybe. Well, actually, I just want to start, throw this out there for the board to start considering the possibilities of adapting some building codes and some uh, efficiency Vermont standards in the futures as we have discussed mergers and stuff like that with other entities. Uh, that way, when if and when we merge or do anything with the fire department, that uh, we we have some uh, enforcement. Well, I think we could authorize them to inspect the building so. code anyway if we had one adopted. And when I talked to yeah. Bob Warner this morning, you know, the fact that we don't have one, um, it really doesn't. You know, how do we? I think that one of the things is the apartments, the the buildings that we have. These these false alarms. We need to do something with it, and also. As we get more and more apartments in there, uh, there'll be more and more um, potential for code violations and inspections. We need well, to make sure residents are safe and 
again, like Barry City, I believe they didn't they just blanket they almost adopt the state fire code. I believe so. I believe so. And, and the other part of it is, though, is not just looking at these buildings, multi-use buildings, because labor and industry fire prevention does the majority of the inspections. But with the way the state's going on legislation, trying to license carpenters in this state and move forward that's in front of them, I think it'd be a smart move to start thinking about moving in that direction uh, and adapting some of the efficiency Vermont standards for buildings to uh, help move lowering the carbon footprint forward. There's a new sustainable building. So would you like to invite somebody from our planning commission in and talk about that? Or is that, I mean, that's where we would. Yeah, I would, and I would also like to invite in uh, we got into the uh, presentation for, uh, I think, to uh, the governor, uh, Enrique Bonos, I believe was his name, about, you know, the sustainability and moving forward to help lower the carbon footprint. Okay. Anything else? No. So I have. John? What is the timeline on the bridge replacement on Brookfield Road for the Snow Machine Trail? Uh, that's actually going to start it's supposed to start sometime in the next week. few weeks probably next week i believe the materials are the, job. the beams are on site the uh the blocks are there the black road bridge is the beams are in it's been seated the seal is on uh everything's done they, they have the four by four so they're just going to put the decking on uh, the plan is, I did want to verify, like they are putting handrails on the bridge on Irish Shell, but they're not doing anything on the other bridge. So I don't know if we want to add to that or change it or ask for that, but I don't think it needs it. It didn't have it before, but I just wanted to let you know that that's information I found. Um, I don't think that's going to get as much use, but I know people will start using it more recreationally uh, once word travels that it's a really nice bridge. And I'd, I'd like to thank, I know Ted Clark uh, came up there with his excavator and spent all like pretty much all weekend without asking for anything from the town, had it delivered, his yeah. equipment, his fuel. Um, and I think that was really nice that he did that. Definitely. I noticed there was a third rock out right after the parking lot to make it even hard for the bikes to come through now. And I'm kind of questioning who put the rock there and why. I think that, our, I think that Tim went over and moved the rocks um, I think Tim went over and moved the rocks and, uh, when they brought the beams and all that in, and I think he just put them back however they got put back. And, and I think we have a Berlin resident that's been very, very nice and letting people access their property to get up and do this work on the trail. And... <laughs> all right. Thank you. <laughs> all right. That was it. Uh, Flo, do you have any... <laughs> you have anything for roundtable flow? I don't, but thank you. All right. I'm, I don't have anything, I don't think. One other thing to mention, sorry, I missed it. The corridor agreement with that with David has been signed. So that is right. good to go. Yeah, I should have mentioned the next one. And uh, no anticipation of executive session? Entertain a motion. We adjourn. Second. Any discussion? Those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. We're Aye. Adjourned. Thanks, Flo. Have a good night.